It's Dar Salakouvay here, reporting live from CS 2015. I'm here with Michelle Layden Lee, Senior Director of Marketing at Qualcomm. And we're very, very privileged to be able to spend some time with Qualcomm, the makers of a very famous chip that's just released here at CS. Care to talk a little bit more about the Snapdragon 800? Absolutely. Okay. So we actually have the Snapdragon 800 tier of products, and yes. our newest is the Snapdragon 810. My football. Very, no worries. Very, very <laughs> excited to be showing that off here at CES um, in our booth. Um, and also excited to have the first commercial device out with Snapdragon 810, which is LG G Flex 2. Exciting. Um, very, very exciting. Um, you know, if you followed us on the premium tier for a while, you mm -hmm. know that um, we've really been um, pushing the envelope in the area of multimedia. Mm -hmm. Key reason being we do a lot of consumer research. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we found with folks who are in that sort of cutting edge uh, community is they really want to have the latest and greatest camera, yeah the best video experience, the best audio experience, and so we've really been driving that on the premium tier. Mm -hmm. One of the other reasons that we do that, though, is because when we design at the premium tier point, we're then able to take all of those blocks of technologies yeah. and we're able to scale those across our roadmap. So even someone who is within a budget of maybe a $100 smartphone yeah. or a sub $100 smartphone, they should still get a great experience at their price point. Mm -hmm. And that's really our mantra. So we design up at that premium point, but then we're able to scale the technology down. So what you'll see on the Snapdragon 810 is um, you'll see that this is now we're onto our third generation 4K mm -hmm. uh, device. We can record and play back in 4K. We've added hardware compression, so HEVC if you're familiar yes. with that, .265. Uh, so that makes just a much better experience. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you don't get, I always talk about the swirling circle of death, right, when it's you're watching like a video. You don't want that, thing. right? So you want it to be a really, really smooth experience. Um, we have our Fluence Pro audio, mm -hmm. um, and you can go down to our uh, our theater downstairs and, and hear a little bit about a, a, a little of our audio capability. Um, and then we've really upped the ante on the camera. Mm -hmm. So most people that I talk to now, um, they may own a standalone digital camera. I do, but yeah. I rarely have it with me. I of always course. have my phone. So I want my phone camera to be fantastic. And so on the 810, what we've done is we have a dual ISP, mm -hmm. um, but we've upped the bit rate to 14 bits. So okay, uh, support for a larger sensor, yeah. better camera capability. But in addition to hardware, we also offer an array of software, or I would call middleware, hmm. for camera capabilities that take advantage of our heterogeneous computing uh, paradigm, if you will, so that we can do post-processing pre and post processing that gets a better camera experience. And you can see a little bit of that down in the booth as well. We'll definitely be checking it out. Great. Now, a lot of people are really interested to know about uh, the DSP and audio processing. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, that's an area that Qualcomm's really excelled in. You know, we've spoken with Wolfson and others you know, that have been adopted in some of the, your competitors' products. Um, but can you just talk a little bit about what Qualcomm's done on the audio side of things? Absolutely. So we have two pieces on the audio side. We do have a DSP integrated into the Snapdragon. Mm -hmm. um, the reason we do that is, as you know, uh, you know, we have an SOC, not yeah. just a CPU. Exactly. Um, and the reason for that is because the pre preeminent uh, piece of that we have to keep in our mind when we design is power, Always. right? Always. Yeah. So you could probably process pretty much anything on a CPU, <laughs> yeah. but sometimes it's com completely overkill. You yeah. don't need it. Yeah. So we have a DSP. It's our own um, technology. It's incredibly low power. Mm -hmm. It runs in parallel to the CPU, okay. um, and it's very, very efficient. Mm -hmm. And we found that for audio, and in some cases video, it's a really nice little efficient engine. Mm -hmm. And we don't even have to bother with the CPU cores. We can run it on the DSP very low power. Nice. And so we do a lot of our audio processing in that DSP. In addition to the DSP, we also have a codec that's part of the chipset, okay. an audio codec. And we use that and we've been able to get just really, really good quality audio. Mm -hmm. And then it takes advantage of the pairing with the DSP to mm -hmm. do that at low power. Nice. And so we're able to do things like um, you know, background noise cancellation, uh, multi uh, 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 multi-signal for for multi-channel, excuse me, for audio. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just Beamer technology, so that you're mm -hmm. going to just get much. That's not audio; it's voice, but mm -hmm. voice is still very important. So you get a Incredibly. really, really nice, crisp voice quality. Um, so there's lots of things that we're doing today in the Fluence Pro. Sometimes uh, I think that. Uh we forget that we actually use our smartphones for calling. You do. You, know, <laughs> you do. We've been guilty of it too, where we actually <laughs> haven't reviewed the voice calling because these devices are so incredibly powerful. Yeah. So yeah. it's a big, it's a big update for Qualcomm. Everything's moving towards 64-bit. Um, arguably, I mean, Qualcomm makes the finest SOCs in the world. Um, I'm, 
just curious to know what you see kind of coming um, for tablets, especially. You know, we were obviously attending Nvidia's press conference where they release the Tegra X one, and they're calling it their super chip, one teraflop, under ten watts of power. Is Qualcomm going to be kind of delineating further and offering separate SOCs for the tablets? Well, you know, it's interesting. We actually, we we've, we've always sort of been somewhat. Uh, form factor agnostic in how we do yeah. these. And if you look at how we're growing into the adjacencies, it becomes even more apparent. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of the day, our you know, pr premier, you know, what we really focus on is low power, high performance. Yes. And when we do our segmentation analysis and our consumer research, obviously we look at the segments. And what we see is a lot of consistency in those two areas, right? For both, especially for smartphones and for tablets. Yeah. Um, there, there are other things that you have to keep in mind. For example, with tablets, there are some SKUs you want to just have Wi-Fi only. You don't necessarily want wireless WAN, although now we see that shifting. We see mm -hmm. a lot more wireless WAN attached. So there's the things like that. So we do SKUs yeah. of the products to address some of those. But for the most part, we try to build the best SOC, yeah. with best performance, best feature set mm -hmm. for user experience uh, from a user experience standpoint and at the lowest power. And it's really interesting because as we've started to move into the adjacencies, and I'll give you an example, mm -hmm. in wearables, if you go to our wearables display, you'll see Snapdragon 400 yes, in a lot of the wearables. Uh, Android Wear is, is one of the OSs that we support. Yes. And you know, at first people said, well, really? Really? <laughs> yes, <Overkill>, because, right? <laughs> well, but it's not because no. when you look at it, it gets you that really low power, mm -hmm. but it's incredibly performance oriented yes. in terms of running a really nice high level OS, Absolutely. which increasingly, especially with Android Wear as a high level OS, increasingly wearables is looking like it's shifting in that direction, yes. right? Not, and it's not just watches, it's the glasses, it's Everything. other types of wearables. So, you know, we're, we're kind of proud of the fact yeah. that we have stayed somewhat form factor agnostic, but we've been delivering the feature set that allows us to sort of extend into these other adjacencies. Well, I think it's to do with your, um, Articulation on Qualcomm's philosophy when they make products is mm -hmm. that you always reach for the highest possible pinnacle you can achieve, and then you bring down all the building blocks down to lower segments, mm -hmm. you know, with value. I mean, consumers crave a fluid experience no matter if it's on the wrist or on their face or in their pocket. Exactly. Um, so, in terms of a kind of a power throughput increase from Snapdragon 800, and an 800, you know, look at a phone like the LG G2, which I think a lot of people really loved. It sold very well. It was one of the first to support Snapdragon 800. Like how big of an improvement are we looking at from going from 800 to 810? Yeah, it, you know, it, you have to look at feature to feature. Yeah. So, um, you know, we used to, sort of, I'll, I'll step back from it. It used mm. to be in the old PCs days, you just talk about raw, you yeah. know, frequency. We used to call it speeds and feeds, mm. right? Um, most consumers these days, they don't really care about that <laughs> so much. They want to be fast. Yes. But they don't necessarily <laughs> equate a gigahertz number to fast, no. right? Um, in the term, in, in the case of LTE, it has nothing to do with that, right? No, it's throughput, so. right? Yeah. So um, what we look at is what, how are we increasing the feature sets that people care about? I see. So it's things like going from Adreno 420 to or 400 initially to 420 to mm -hmm. 430, right? Yes. And it's increasing the uh, graphics capability. And there's a lot of ways to measure that, right? Oh, you can measure yeah, it by many. pixel count. You can measure, but we, I'd say between 420 and 430, we're going to get a significant increase yeah. in graphics performance, right? That's important. UI, yeah. gaming, post-processing. The GPU has a lot to do with it camera post-processing. <laughs> yeah. So all of those things are important for that user experience. Camera, we went from a single ISP, mm -hmm. then to a dual ISP, mm -hmm. then to a dual ISP 14-bit. Wow. So it's it's sort of hard for me to say it's just a blah number, right? Yeah, X percent you performance really increase. It. You can't really quantify it. You really have to look at what's the user experience. Is camera going to be better? Yes. Yeah, because at 14 bit, I'm going to be able to support a much larger sensor, exactly. and I'm going to get a much better experience. And if you see what we're doing with even some of our firmware mm -hmm. or our, our software packages, if you go downstairs, we're doing and we're partnering with some uh, some some companies to do you know an increase in in zoom. Like nice. if you ever tried to zoom on a mobile phone, it drives Not you crazy, right? Experience. Not a very good experience. No. Well, that's a problem. So we're trying to fix that, right? So it's those kinds of things that we're looking at. We're not just looking at speeds and feeds. Interesting. I mean, I'm trying to think of good questions to ask you. You know, you seem to have a great response for everything. So in terms of the market share, Qualcomm obviously has a commanding lead. You know, had LTE dominance uh, in a lot of markets for a long time. Um, you know, you look at a mature economy like South Korea where they have faster LTE than we have Wi-Fi in the States. Um, if you could just throw some kind of um, prognostications out there, for lack of a better term, 
like in the future, do you feel as though um, a smartphone will have the potential um, to take over the majority of the functions that we use beyond you know, a PC or a tablet? Well, it's interesting. You know, I heard somebody say this the other day, and I thought, you know, that's a very interesting way of looking at it. If you look at, go back in history, and you look at sort of the history of the PC, and it used to be years ago, you'd come in and you'd have a desktop, yeah. and nobody had a laptop. Yeah. And the only people who had laptops were maybe 5 or 10% of the workforce, you know, say in the enterprise that traveled, right? Then, you know, sort of time went by, and, and the laptop got better and better, and it, over time, sort of the cost came, curve came down so that they were in parity with the, with the desktop. And eventually, that toggled so that 80 to 90 percent of the workforce had a desktop. So it was a, it was the, the desktop, the, the, the laptop initially was sort of a companion, mm -hmm. if you will, for a certain number of people to the desktop. Then the desktop went away, and then you had your, your laptop. Mm -hmm. And now, increasingly, your smartphone is sort of your companion to your laptop, yep. but increasingly, your smartphone and your tablet are starting to get so capable yes. that you sort of don't even now need the laptop. And I always challenge myself <laughs> because I'm in the industry yep. that when I travel, I travel only with my smartphone or really? my tablet, and I try to do everything because I want to see the pain points. Yeah. And if I can go back and complain about something Absolutely. and get somebody to listen to me, we get better. So, you know, I'm at the point now when I travel, I can pretty much do almost anything yeah. I need to do Basically. with maybe the exception of really hardcore productivity yeah. on Especially. my phone or my tablet. Yeah. And even the productivity with an external keyboard, I can do on my tablet. Pretty much. I so. You know, I see that direction happening. Mm. The other thing that I think is really interesting is if you look at what's happening in the adjacent markets, it's all be driven by the smartphone, yeah. right? If you look at wearables, if you look at uh, even automotive in a lot of ways, because I think mm -hmm. what happened with automotive is people start bringing in their devices into the car. Always. I'll give you an example, and I always look at my kids because they are the future. Yeah. Uh, my daughter will get in with her phone and it's her phone. She doesn't want anybody else's phone, it's her phone. She will watch in the house movies on her phone, sitting in front of the big screen TV. They love it, dual screen. Why? Because, no, <laughs> she didn't even use the TV. Why? I say, you have a, you have a big screen, why? Because it's mine. Uh, it's my movie, it's my headsets, I'm in my own little world, mm -hmm. I want to watch it. When she gets in the car, she wants to take that with her. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, you know, we have a DVD player in the car, right, today. She'll take her laptop in with her, but there's no Wi-Fi connectivity in my car, not yet, yeah. and no LTE, right? <laughs> so unless I've got my phone on a spot, it has a hot spot, she's watching the DVD player. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's not a good experience. No. I mean, she wants to go in with a movie. She wants to maybe move the movie to whatever screen is in the car, <laughs> watch it or her game, and when she gets out, she wants to take it with her. But see, those are the kinds of things yeah. that are really interesting, and that's driven by mobile, because mm -hmm. it's that mobile in and around the car that's driving that sort of latent desire mm. by consumers for that kind of seamless experience. I wouldn't like to view your carrier bills though, with all the LTE you'd be calling <laughs> Well, them. you know, that, that's a different story. That's a business model. That is. And I think over time you'll see the business model, if I had to predict, because, you know, if you look at past history, yes. business models change they do to adapt. as to adapt. Of and, course. you know, I would, you know, I can't say for certainty, but I would suspect that over time business models will oh, change will to adapt. They will get less expensive as consumers create more data. Yeah. So, I mean, performance of all our devices is excellent, you know, across the line, even iPhone, obviously, and a lot of the Android devices, even at the budget segment, sub $100, it's still a premium experience today. It's pretty remarkable, thinking how quickly we've come. Mm -hmm. So Qualcomm as a company, um, you talk about pain points a lot, you know, and I think that's a really, really good sort of outlook, you know, because then you can find better ways to improve things. So should we just kind of expect, you know, consistent impro improvement in performance, obviously an adherence to low power battery life, and then you know, in terms of, I'm just trying to um, find the words to... What else? Exactly. What yeah. else? What else is goes back to my previous point about we don't just look at speeds and features, we look at features and user yeah. experience. So I'll give you an example. Sensors. Yeah. I mean, the amount of sensors that are now on this thing and mm -hmm. sensor processing, and that's only going to increase. Yeah. So then you think about what else you can do with those types of sensors on of any stuff. device. A lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to get all these new user experiences and these new usage models that we probably can't even dream up today. Yeah. I mean, one of the things we've talked about is, um, you know, we've looked at in, in terms of consumer research is in some parts of the world, there's a real problem with, um, you know, understanding within a home if there's carbon yeah. uh, monoxide or whatever. And so you have a sensor for that, mm -hmm. right? And you think, 
you know, but in some parts of the world, that would be a really important thing to feature to have yeah, on your phone, absolutely. right, to alert. Yeah. Um, so there, we was talking to someone the other day who has a child who's a type 1 diabetic, okay. um, and just having an alert for when blood sugar gets low, yeah. right? So it's things like that that we see that are really interesting, and it's, again, not just the phone or the tablet, but now as sort of the mobile mobile sort of permeates, it's in, it's in mm -hmm. your connected home, it's in your connected car, you can have access to any of that anywhere at, without necessarily having to go look for a Wi-Fi hotspot. Yeah. So, Snapdragon 810, obviously focusing on the features, all the great stuff that you guys do, high performance, fast LTE. What, uh, in terms of the rollout of you know, more advanced SOCs in the near future, are we looking at uh, kind of a slowing down and uh, kind of maturity and focusing more on the high growth areas, like emerging markets? Um, you know, some of the 615s and lower the 400, 410? Well, I think, it, as I described, our paradigm is to sort of again, yeah. uh, design at the top and, and waterfall, so we can't slow down, right? Yeah. Because, the, no, because yeah. that, that, that premium design point is the waterfall for everything else. Exactly. And so, yeah. if anything, um, I, I certainly, I think the refresh rate is not slowing down. Yeah. Um, people, with, especially with their smartphones, are refreshing, we, we'd say every sort of one to two years. Yeah. And then phones themselves tend to sort of get handed off to, you know, like, I'm done, my kid gets exactly. my old phone, so they're around my for a little, few, more, few more years. Yeah. But, but, but it is, you know, people, consumers especially, as they see what they don't have, they, mm -hmm. they sort of tend to then want more. Yeah. You know, at first you're, you're really happy with it, and then it's like, oh darn it, why doesn't it do this, right? So we see that, that pace continuing. But because we're also looking at these adjacencies, that's another thing to think about. And mm -hmm. so, you know, as we, as we design, we're going to keep the adjacencies in mind. And mm -hmm. when those adjacencies grow into, you know, sort of volume businesses, you know, those, that's opportunity for us Absolutely. to look at doing, you know, things specifically maybe for that industry. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, don't, I don't think we're slowing down anytime soon. That's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to slow down. You know, when you look at Japan or South Korea, people switch phones every six months. Yeah. So if you can kind of get up to that schedule, yeah. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, exactly. Well, very cool. Well, I want to say a huge thank you. you know, thank for you. Spending we time appreciate the today. interest. You know, we're absolutely interested in what you're doing. Great. Continue to push the envelope and deliver a great experience for consumers. And as, as always, you know, we're grateful for your support. So. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Darcy Lukube from CS 2015 here with Qualcomm, signing off.